Yo, what's up guys, Matt from Upsilon Mining coming back at you with another video. And today I thought I'd do something just a little bit different. Um, today is gonna be a simple repair video. And what happened was on this RTX 3080 uh, Dell from an Alienware, from an Alienware PC, uh, the issue was we had a lot of vibration downstairs and I was wondering what was going on with it. It kept vibrating and vibrating and vibrating. So if you ever see one of your fa uh, your GPUs vibrating a lot, stop the rig and take a look. And if you look closely here, I'm sure you guys can see what the issue is. We have a missing fan blade. So it looks like this fan blade snapped off some point. I'm not sure how. I have uh, a lot of these Dell RTX um, GPUs and a lot of them actually have the same problem where the fan blades are just made really, really cheap. So what I did was I went on Amazon and, not Amazon, sorry, eBay, and, and ordered replacement fans. Now, this was actually for another GPU, um, but since this, this one broke <laughs> um, before I got around to fixing the other one, I'm hoping that I only need one fan because the other one only needs one fan as well. So I replaced the one and hopefully um, the other one will be the opposite broken one. So let's take a look at this repair now and let's get to it. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have your, obviously your little screwdriver set. And we're just gonna take off the shroud here. So let's take a look at how this shroud's attached. So it looks like there is a connector here, right here, which attaches the shroud cables. What are we? You can see that there's one there and there's one there as well and this supplies the power to both the fan as well as the lit up uh, GTX GeForce RTX logo at the top so we're just going to flip it on its side and start taking off the screws here one at a time and I thought I'd just chat a little bit while I'm doing this so um, yeah, I don't know if you guys thought about the Grow 10 video I did yesterday. That was pretty, uh, I was like quite, actually quite proud of that video. As a new YouTuber, I'm still kind of getting used to um, video editing, creating a format that's actually appealing, uh, as well as captivating and that actually keeps people's interest. And it's also, believe it or not, it's actually quite challenging to actually come up with interesting new ideas to actually um, create videos about. Um, because there's so many things that have already been done, so it's more so just trying to do something in a different way that someone else hasn't done. Like that video, I really tried to, um, I really was trying to do something someone else uh, hasn't done with regard to the grow tents, which is actually building the grow tent. A lot, not a lot of people I've seen actually show unboxing of a, of a grow tent and then building the grow tent in the process of putting everything in the grow tent. Usually the grow tent's already put together and you're like, magically it's already there. Okay, so we took off the fan, uh, the screws. There's three screws here and three screws there. And it looks like this shroud will pop right off, I think, pretty easily. So I always take my time. Always take your time with this stuff, guys. There's no rush. So this is kind of dirty. I wish I had some, uh, man, my, if I had my compressor or something, it'd be a good opportunity to, to blow this out right now. I don't have my compressor on me right now. It's in the garage, unfortunately. I plan to get one of those things which you can uh, air pop, air, blah, 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 kind of just blow it down. So they see the fuzz. This is the kind of stuff that accumulates inside of GPUs if you let it go too long. Uh, it just collects inside the fins of the cooler, um, and it's kind of not very, very nicely nice. But what I'll do is I'm just gonna put this together. I'll blow it down another time, I think, because I don't have the compressor on me and I wasn't prepared when I'm doing this video. So which one's actually broken? There's actually two fans um, part of this assembly. So it looks like, um, let's just take it off and see what we're like, see what we're working with. So it looks like there's two, uh, there's three screws in here. I always like to group my screws together. So I'll put like all the screws that hold the actual assembly here. If I'm taking apart anything, um, I've always been that way. I, I uh, dismantle entire engines, like right down to the crank uh, the crankcase pulling out pistons and rods and everything. And there's a lot of screws, man, when you talk about cars and stuff. So, I mean, part of my system was always just keeping similar screws together uh, so that you don't lose them. But I've always been pretty good at just disassembling things and reassembling them ever since I was a kid, really. So it looks like that comes off pretty easily. 
like this, take it off this way. Um, so let's just gently take the wires out here. So it looks like uh, this part does pull out. I'm not sure how hard. Not sure how hard that is to pull out. You don't want to pull too hard because if you pull too hard, you can actually yank the. Um, see, if you look right here, there's actually uh, this one attaches here, and then this attaches to this part. So I think, yeah, yeah. So this attaches to the. So you just get something in there and pry it out. Usually, works pretty good. Or even a screwdriver would work too. You don't want to yank on the wires. Uh, well, let me just pull it up. Whatever. <sighs> All right, I just went against my own advice. Don't yank on the wires, guys. <laughs> um, let's take a look at this one here. This looks like this comes out pretty easy too. Um, yep. Yeah. You just gotta be careful when you're pulling on this. I'm always paranoid about that. So this part comes right out. Looks like we got away just fine. So there's the broken fan. Okay. As you can saw, there's two connections on it. So I'm gonna use the one with the two connections on it as well as the new one. We're gonna replace that guy. So that's gonna go in the junk bin because we can't really use that. I've I've repaired fan blades before using like just like plastic soldering the blade back on if I could find it. But in this case, it just completely went missing. I've been having a lot of bad luck with fans lately. Like actually one of the fans that I had just completely, uh, like I've had two ASIC fans, a blade snapped off just because it brushed against like my leg or the pants. So I just put all these guards on them. I'll do a video on that. But those fans are spinning so fast, 5,000, five to 6,000 RPM. It's enough to take your finger off. If you put your finger in there, I actually got my finger caught in one of those fans. Be careful, man, because like your fan, your the fan blade versus your finger, your finger will probably lose. But with these kind of fans, they're just so cheap, they'll snap and I've had them snapping. Anyways, but those ASIC fans, yeah, I had like just two of those brush up against my shirt, suck in my shirt and the back of my calf as I was walking, came too close to it and it literally broke off. So if you're gonna get those fans, make sure you order some fan guards to go on them as well, because they're no joke. Um, okay, so here's the new fan. We're gonna put it back into here. Pretty simple. Like this. Yeah, can you see that? Yeah, I'm just kind of like looking at my camera at the same time as doing that. So it looks like it lines up fine. And um, yeah, so it just has the connectors that go back like this. So we'll connect this part uh, into here. That'll power the light because those lights look really cool on the top. We don't want to lose that. And this part, which is a new connector goes right into where the PCB is. That's over here. I like this card because I didn't have to dismantle this one and put thermal rights on. I actually had um, bought this off eBay and the guy had already done that for me. So <laughs> it was actually really, uh, it was nice having to do that. I really hate having to do the thermal pads and it's almost like a necessity on 3080s and 3090 cards. They just can't handle the heat. Like if you don't, change the pads over on those things like literally you'll regret it the second you try to overclock it at all or, or mine on it it just doesn't it doesn't work at all so it looks like it goes that way so we're just gonna flip it around just for a temp just for a bit and this way you get the screws back in it's not nothing really hard guys it's pretty simple stuff but you just gotta like you gotta line it up and you gotta find like an angle that works I find that's the biggest pain in the butt with this it would be good if they just literally slid in because like this is a really a pain but let's see where is it you gotta make sure the blades are out of the way yeah there we go so you just find one hole that would work there now it's all messed up whatever okay so let's just take your magnetic screwdriver now this is like a reason why magnetic screwdrivers are like a lifesaver look at that like literally staying on obviously this is nothing you guys haven't seen before but like it's staying on the screw on the screwdriver, which is awesome because you can just literally, as soon as you line it up, you can just stick it down and start screwing it in. 
soon as I get this damn thing aligned. Come on. Anyways, I guess I'll talk for a second about, um, about something interesting. Oh, jeez. While I'm doing this as well. So, like, I did the grow tent video. And the grow tent video was uh, good. And it worked good with those rigs that I had on there. Because they weren't very, like, heat intensive rigs. I mean, if that makes sense. They didn't use a lot of, uh, they weren't really, man, why is this not going in? They weren't demanding uh, with power, so they weren't generating a lot of heat. They're just 6,600 rigs. So basically, um, I thought that I could go. Okay, I'm trying to I'm starting to slowly line up the hole. You guys just love lining up holes. I'm I'm totally just talking about screws, like literally screws right now. Come on, it's so freaking tedious. Okay, is it then? Oh, oh. Ah, there we go. Got one in. Guys, I got one in. I got it in. That's a score. Okay, you don't want to screw too hard. <laughs> and any other day, I'll give I'll give the opposite advice. But you don't want to screw too hard <laughs> when it comes to this um, these things because literally, like it's just plastic versus the metal, and literally, you will strip the hole. And you will hate your life if you strip the hole because then you have to use a bigger screw and it might not fit, it might not be the right size screw. So just screw it in until you just feel it just grab and just a little more and just slowly adjust the tension of the screw. So this one is not liking what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna go a little bit on angle there come back up the yeah, I have to go a little bit on angle and get it through so as I'm, I'm screwing it through now and I'm just starting to feel it just tense just a little bit just a little bit same with this one just a little bit you don't want to like reel it on because you'll strip the plastic you strip the plastic then uh, your SOL I've done that with another one of these before and I had to just use a bigger screw and I just wasn't confident with how long that the longevity of those screws so just screw it once you line it up See, once you get the first one, it's always easy to get the second one. Don't screw too hard, guys. Screw gentle. Killing me softly with his voice. Killing me softly. You guys remember that song? It's such a bad song. I, was that a good song? That was a pretty cheesy song from the 90s. I grew up in the 90s. So, like, I had to listen to all this terrible R&B on the radio, like, in the 90s when I was a kid. But... We didn't have GPUs back then. Guys, I was like messing around with 386, 486, DX2, 66, Packard Bells back then. So we never had that back in the day. We never had GPUs, we never had cool stuff like that. I ran a BBS back in the day. You guys, any guys that run a BBS or know about BBSs? Like there was two types of software. There was Renegade and there was Tag. They were both BBS softwares and they would actually allow you to connect using a dial-up software kind of like an SSH but before SSH totally unencrypted no security and you would just dial into these bullet board built-in board systems and you download games and uh, pictures and stuff like that <laughs> pictures yes pictures pictures of uh, dogs and and uh, wildlife and things like that you know things that are wholesome that's the kind of pictures you would download off these sites. So I'm just going to readjust this. This wire is not cooperating, so I'm just going to loop it around better. If you guys, if you guys um, use BBS systems back in the day, comment below. I'd like to hear a little about it, about a little bit, a little bit about it. It's just cool. I don't know. It makes me feel old. Like it's so old that it was before the internet. Like if you were born before the internet existed. Give me a shout out if you were messing around with this stuff back in the day. A lot of cool stuff. I mean, retro. I'm into the kind of retro computing as well. There's so much cool stuff, like with regard to like, just like old computers, like 8-bit. They call it like 8-bit, like retro computing. I don't know if you guys are into that, but like, 
Commodores and Vic 20s and all that stuff. I actually have a couple on the shelf back there. And a lot of tinkering goes into those. It's really cool, actually, just uh, messing around with those old machines. Because I remember in like, grade school, growing up, we had like literally full, um, like full cafeteria-sized rooms filled with these like, Commodore 64s. And then to load a program, you literally had to write this, you had to write like a statement, right, into this basic interpreter, like load and like star, and then like a comma, and then and the name of the disc. <laughs> it was so unuser friendly. We had the kids like doing that back in the day, like grade one, grade two kids. Like I remember the commands being written out, like and like printed on a piece of paper, like right next to the computer, saying, um, "Okay, well, if you want to load, you know this." typing program or this math wizard program or some shit like that. You'd have to just like type in the command. And that's fun. It's interesting. Long time ago now. I'll tell you one thing. I wish I would have gotten to uh, mining sooner. It's, yeah. I don't know. I really literally just discovered mining at the end of last year. So I was just only doing it for like maybe six months or so. And uh, when I discovered it, I'm like, what? I started doing it, I'm like, why didn't I do this earlier, you know? Was it like fear? I think it was like, I didn't really, well, first off, I didn't really know about it. And then I think second to that, I might have been too afraid to do it just because like I wasn't, I was pretty risk averse most of my life. I didn't want to do anything that I would lose my money. But oddly enough, I would do all kinds of stupid stuff that would lose money. Like, um, like spending a gazillion dollars on car projects and things like that. I remember back in the day, like... Fast and the Furious. You guys ever watched Fast and the Furious? Like from like the year 1999. Paul Walker, man, man, I love that stuff. I used to love like souped up modified, you know, cars like that. Honda Civics and like the Mitsubishi Eclipse. You guys know that green Mitsubishi Eclipse? God, man, that was the coolest car. I love that car. I should buy a car like that and actually do it up, but it just would look totally bad. I mean, <laughs> oh, anyways. Not in style anymore, guys. Some things fade in style. Some things are timeless. Okay, beautiful. Look at that. So the fans are on. And that's it for the video. That's how easy it is to replace a fan on most of these GPUs. You usually have the outer shroud. Uh, Chump Change and a lot of these other YouTubers actually have taken these shrouds right off and literally just put this in like a in like a, a server case and let it cool that way so, so the air blows over top and you save a little bit of wattage by not having to run these fans too and it works fine without the shroud on too but uh i don't know i just think shrouds just look cool right i mean when that's in the case this glows like blue it looks really cool i just like these cards something about these cards are they're, they're not too big but you know like the 3080s and 3090s they both have heating issues but this one thermal right pads have been replaced already on it so it's pretty good. I get around 100, maybe 99 to 100 mega hash in this, depending on how, how much you know air flows over top of it. But I'm gonna get this back in the rig because I have a whole rig down, like 350 mega hash. It's just one of the one of the side rigs I got. But I'm gonna get this back in. All right, guys. Anyways, thanks for hanging out, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. As always, guys, if you guys like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Smash that like button. I appreciate every single last one of you viewers and subscribers. Um, and I uh, really do appreciate it if you could sm uh, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot.